Hi guys, welcome to the Epic Aesthetic YouTube channel. Uh, basically what I have for you today and over the next coming weeks is a little free program I whipped up for a friend of mine who has an apartment gym. So basically it's pretty good for an apartment gym. It's uh, got a good set of dumbbells and a few other key bits of equipment, but obviously not a fully fledged gym. So just to kick off this routine, um, we've got dumbbell delt press and basically this is a pretty simple exercise um, it's kind of challenging as far as balancing weights but um, you know it's it's not a hard one to pick up or learn by any means um, so what I'm doing here is what's called a rep cadence I'm taking about you know a second to raise the weight so a strong positive motion to raise the weight I sort of stop dead at the top with a slight bend to the elbows to keep the stress on the delts and not on the triceps and I lower the weight for three seconds. So this will be a common theme you'll, you'll see through a lot of my lifts um, with slight variation, but basically that theme of strong lifting, little pause, and lowering the weight under control. And uh, there's a few reasons for that, uh, which I'll explain over the coming videos or in some separate videos. Um, but all you need to do now is just see what I do and copy it as best you can and make up your own mind. Um, in this particular set, this is my working set, but I'm just using baby weights for demonstration purposes. So what I'm trying to show you here is what's called a triple rest pause set. That will be one set to failure. I'll take a six breath pause, uh, just at the, the pace your body wants to breathe at followed by a second set to failure, another six breath pause, and a final set to failure. And that's what I'll call triple rest pause. Now, if I do two sets with a six breath pause in between, that'll be called a double rest pause. And uh, one set to failure is uh, pretty obvious, I think. Um, in this routine, I've basically got an accompanying spreadsheet, which kind of lays out the plan. Um, it's, it's a four week cycle um, and the first week is one set to failure uh, as well as some warm-up sets. The second week is the double rest pause. Uh, the third week is the triple rest pause on all your working sets and the fourth week is a deload before starting again. So if you can have a look at the link there, I've got a little Dropbox link that'll uh, give you a spreadsheet to have, have a look at and might make things a little bit more clearer than I can perhaps explain just with a voiceover. Uh, the second exercise of the evening is the side lateral. Um, again, just really take note of, of the controlled rep cadence. Um, I'll come up with a strong positive, I'll hold for two seconds, and then I'll lower the weight under control for three seconds. And the whole point of this is just to take momentum out of the lift, uh, subject the weight to the target muscle, and just get the body English right out of the lift so that you can sort of say, the muscle I aim to work out today, it got hammered, and I didn't use other body parts to kind of make me look tough, but not actually be tough. Um, so with this exercise, the contracted position at the top is the hardest part of the lift. So a two second, uh, two second static uh, will take advantage of that difficult part of the rep and really get that muscle, that target muscle of the side delt working very, very hard. Um, just having the six second breath, stretch out the forearms, get some oxygen in and start again to failure. So just watch and take note of the cadence. Occasionally you'll see me glance up at the TV just to catch uh, the Winter Olympics.
Okay, so this is the first of our back exercises. The first two exercises, we're targeting our delts. Um, the next two, we'll be targeting our back. Uh, basically, you've got a reverse grip um, position, just a medium kind of distance apart. I pull the weight down strong. I hold for two seconds in the contracted position, and I lower the weight for three seconds until failure. Just repeating them reps. One of the uh, most important things with, with any back training is really to just focus on, on drawing your shoulders down and back, just getting what's called scapular retraction happening, uh, which is going to really put a lot of load and a lot of stress on your back muscles. Um, if you don't sort of do this as a regular habit, you'll find that you get a lot of bicep stimulation, but your back's often left in a position where it's not taken to full fatigue. So um, the main reason for the reverse grip is, is to make the biceps in their strongest position and then to use the static um, and, and heavily contracted position with the, the elbows down and back to really target the, the lats and I get as much back stimulus as possible before the biceps give out on you, which they tend to do before your back. So down strong. Hold for two, get them arms right back, then lower under control for three seconds. Each and every rep, uh, just like all the other exercises previous. Okay, so. Um, I didn't really show the triple rest pause set there because I'm pretty sure from the other exercises you can probably extrapolate how it goes as far as breathing and your pauses, etc. Um, so we're moving on now to uh, exercise designed for back thickness. This is the dumbbell row. Again, all my exercises are really just bread and butter, really simple, heavy movements you can get stronger on over time. I really don't play around with, with too many isolation moves if I can help it. Okay, so you're going to see the same themes again, just drawing that elbow back, getting that contraction of the scapula, rear delts pulled right back, holding for two seconds in the static position to really work it at the hardest part of the lift and lowering under control for three seconds. Um, same theme. Okay, so obviously in that previous exercise, I'd swap arms, um, but it doesn't really need to be shown. Okay, so this is the tricep push down, just using the rope attachment. You can use a V handle or a straight bar. Um, I consider it much of a muchness. Uh, it's up to you what you prefer. But the main things I sort of want to talk about with any kind of isolation exercises is really treat it like that. You uh, you need more discipline than sort of compound movements in, in some regards. Uh, you'll notice that there's almost zero travel with my elbows and what that means is uh, the moderate amount of weight I'm using is going to be subjected directly to my tricep so it is perceived by me as being really heavy, very strenuous. Um, typically you'll see people do this exercise and They'll let those elbows drift right up and they'll throw a bit of chest and lats and a bit of body into it. Helps them move a lot more weight, but that doesn't necessarily mean they stimulate the muscle anymore. And so by using this controlled cadence of a strong positive, a two second hold in the static position right here, and then a three second negative or lowering, uh, you can say from, from one rep to the next, well, you've had a consistent form and as you get more reps and add more weight over time, you can objectively say there's improvement and it's that muscle getting stronger, that muscle getting bigger. It's not you getting better at using your body English and cheating and momentum. You're trying to just treat it like a science, you know, have some fixed points in the movement that you can objectively assess what you're doing.
Okay, so this is our final exercise. Um, it's just a basic um, alternating dumbbell bicep curl. Okay, the same sort of points I made about the tricep push down is, is keep that elbow fixed. I like to turn the dumbbell as quickly as I can once it past the thighs because that sort of straight up and down position is going to stimulate your biceps the best. Um, I hold for two seconds again in the contracted position at the top and just really take note of the fact that my elbows don't come forward to pull that weight up. Um, I'm not trying to recruit my shoulders and swing my back and, and cheat this weight up. I just want my biceps to drive a moderate weight up with good form, strong contraction, strong, strong static and a nice lowering phase. And this basically means that yes, the weight's going to look pretty puny. You know, that's only a 14 kilo dumbbell, which, you know, that's probably less weight than I lifted when I was an 18 year old. But because the form is so disciplined, well the growth I get from it is far more effective and so it's really about using this discipline cadence to um, get more bang for your buck with the weight. It's safer, there's less chance of injury and frankly I find it far more effective for targeting the muscle, subjecting the weight to it and getting it to grow and respond how you want it to. So just a little angle change so you can have a look at uh, how I bring the dumbbell around once it passes my thighs. So um, definitely something I observe in gyms is the fact that almost nobody really curls that well and it's probably the most simple basic exercise there is in the game. But um, there's many ways to get it wrong and, and those include sort of swinging the weights around, letting the elbows come forward and recruiting the front delt into the movement. And um, we're really just trying to cut all of that kind of body English out of the mix by using disciplined cadences. Okay guys, so um, the video is about to come to an end, so thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. This will probably be the first video I've ever uploaded, so any kind of support right now would be greatly appreciated. Um, so just a few things to take from the video is just the discipline form, the rep cadences, and just trying to keep momentum and too much body English out of the exercises. Just use a moderate weight, do it properly, and try and improve from there. So don't forget to check out the link for the spreadsheet. Thank you.